2022 was the year AI proved itself as a creative force to be reckoned with. From AI-made magazine covers to AI art winning competitions, the explosion of text-to-image generators is raising big questions around the future of human creativity. And while some are resisting this shift, others are leaning in and proving what's possible. Welcome to AI's Creative Revolution. Back in 2019, my friend and I decided like, okay, well, there's all these AI tools coming out and you need like a lot of prior knowledge at the time. Like basically we have a PhD in computer science, like understand what was happening under the hood. We landed on like wanting to explore these creative industries. And one of the projects that we did was fashion based. So that first project, we decided to make a little black dress. And from there, we were able to pick one out that was like, wow, this is a really like weird looking dress that only an AI could come up with. It had like one bell sleeve, like an asymmetrical skirt. And you know, as designers, we got to sort of interpret what we were seeing out of the results of the image. So like the image tells you some things, like what is the dress gonna look like, but it doesn't tell you like how the dress was constructed, what the materials were. We really liked this pipeline of the AI can dream something up that's a little bit funky. And then a human would have to then collaborate with the AI. While the use of AI in design isn't necessarily new, the public release of generative AI tools has opened up the floodgates for mass creative exploration. DALI 2 has 1.5 million users who generate about 2 million images a day, while Midjourney's Discord server supports over 5 million members. And these users aren't just generating art for art's sake, they're creating actual designs for things like sneakers, cars, and even buildings. To learn more, we talked with Daniel Kohler, an architect and urbanist at the University of Texas in Austin. While Daniel has researched and used AI tools for years, the launch of new text-to-image models has changed the way he works. What changed with the, uh, I call it image synthesizers, is that they draw content from, from anywhere. It's basically like the, the internet. So they're basically trained on anything, so it means they can also draw anything. I think I generated in last month like 50,000 images or so. Like that, it's just an insane number. For my own work, it's by far the most productive phase I ever had so far and as the most innovative. I'm quite excited about it because I feel that it elevates you as a designer. On one end, you've got people um, that are super excited, seeing what it's got the power to be and then also using it um, in their own creative process to see how it can relate to what their sort of day-to-day -day roles might be. And on the other end, you've got people that are sort of fearing for jobs and jobs of their teams. I don't think it's taking away jobs. I think these tools will ultimately have the ability to take away tasks. And I've done this many times throughout my career of like creating something and it takes me a day or two or three or sometimes a week to create something that I've got in my head to ultimately have it be like not what I thought or not what it could be or it didn't work for whatever reason. I think it's sort of we can shortcut some of those things to allow more time for the tail end of the process where it gets into deciding pretty quickly. You might have more ideas on the table now and defining a little bit of the idea. With tech giants like Adobe and Microsoft making major investments in this space, it won't be long before AI efficiencies are available through mainstream creative platforms. And while these advancements could be the end of creativity as we know it, they also mark the start of a powerful new human tech collaboration. I see this world where we see a lot more cultural expression and a lot more specificity in the design because the people that like would use these products but don't necessarily have experience in fashion now have a chance to like actually become the fashion designer themselves. Speaking from my own experience, never had touched like a sewing machine before, but being able to like see these new designs that had been generated, it was really motivating to want to like take it the next step. I mean, we have a housing crisis and we have an environmental crisis, but you don't see really new kind of buildings because architecture is such a difficult discipline that it seems not really likely that you can actually change or innovate. And the experience what you now have over this kind of quick generation gives you a very positive impression what's actually feasible. Some of the things, especially with a mid-journey as an example, you see a lot of the same stuff. If we sort of rest on our laurels and use these tools in a way that's not unique and distinct for the brands and clients that we work with, then I think that's when we get into trouble. 
you know, as good as uh, AI is, it's sort of like creating that representation, that piece of media. It doesn't have taste. Humans have taste and humans can understand sort of like cultural shifts better than a machine can. And so it will always need a human in the loop deciding what makes sense. You're still going to need to be talented in, in all these different dimensions that the tool gets you maybe 20% of the way there.